One thing I constantly get asked about in videos is how is the battery degradation on your car? So today I'm going to show you the battery degradation on a standard range Model 3 with 17,700 miles and also my Model Y which has 40,000 miles. Also thank you to Birch Living for sponsoring this video. I'm excited about this. We'll have a nice ad in a few minutes, but let's get into the video. This Model 3 is a standard range plus. It has the LFP battery and brand new, it had 253 miles of range. So there's two apps that are gonna help us in doing this and I'll have referrals down in the description for both of these apps. The first app is the Tessie app and that is going to show us our battery degradation. Now some of you are like, this doesn't show you actual degradation. So I'm just going off the information that this app provides. You guys can let me know. Now, Tesla has diagnostic tools that can see what the battery life is and the health of it, because if your battery falls under 70% of its original capacity before 120,000 miles, you should qualify for a brand new battery to be put in your car. So let's see first what the standard range Model 3 has after 17,728 miles. Andrew and I just finished up Fuddruckers, by the way. <clears throat> World's greatest hamburgers. I'm going to explode at some point today. But that's neither here nor there. So, um, actually, we got to show him the trick you just did. Show him the fibers in your pants. Oh, All right, yeah. look. So these are Andrew's pants. Look at this. Look at those fibers. Are you kidding me? The iPhone 13 Pro Max set up with the DJI microphones we've been using. Incredible setup. I'll have them linked down in the description. But anyways, let's get back to focus here. First with the Tessie app. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, not sponsored. I am sponsored with OptiWatt, so we I have done integrations with them before. Those are two apps that I highly recommend. So with the Tessie app, it does automatic driving history analytics detailed charging history analytics with costs, parking history, control your Tesla Live, see your tire pressures, real-time vehicle activity graphs. I, like, I love this app. When Andrew drove across the country, he used it to see how efficient his car was between charge stops. So I really like that. For the battery degradation, as you can see on the screen, the battery is at 96.9% of its original capacity. It degraded 3.1% after 17,000 miles. So typically with batteries, you'll see at first, you'll see the car dip and you start to freak out. You're like, oh my God, in a year, I'm gonna have zero miles. It d generally dips about 10% and then levels off. That's what I've seen with my car that we'll talk about in a minute after 40,000 miles. So 17,000 miles, 3.1% degradation. So it's usable capacity in this car is 52.9 kilowatt hours. It shows you a graph shows the fleet average and your measurements and all that stuff. So the maximum range on this car is 245 miles. And I think that's also reflected in the Tesla app. One thing to note with the LFP battery in this car, the Model Y does not have LFP, Model S and X also do not. So that's unique to the entry level Model 3. The benefit though, is that it has an increased life cycle because it runs at a lower voltage. So you're able to charge it to 100%. Tesla actually recommends you charge your standard range Model 3 up to 100%. Now with my Model Y, you're told not to charge up to 100% on a consistent basis because it can actually damage the battery. So just something to keep in mind. Yes, it does have less range, but you're able to charge to 100% and actually get usage out of the entirety of the battery. All right. Fuddruckers till next time. I have to go to the hospital now to get my arteries cleared. But yeah, so Andrew, you've driven this car across the country. It's your mm -hmm. only car. You have a charging setup at home. Correct. You love this thing. Best car I've ever owned, and I've owned three cars. Yeah. Yet each car has been like a different tier in price. So obviously, yeah, this, this is... should be the best one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but no, it's been great. And honestly, like the speed of it, everyone like, oh, the zero to sixty is slow. It's definitely not slow. And the other thing is from a dig, it's just softer. But once you get going, the immediate torque makes this thing incredible. So look at the beautiful skies out here in Arizona today. We're gonna go back to my Model Y. I'm gonna show you the degradation on that, get the exact mileage and explain that to you. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. And if you guys know of a better way to measure battery degradation, let me know in the comments below. I'm not saying that this is 100% accurate. This is the only reporting that I have access to. I reached out to Gruber Automotive to see if we could work something out together with the diagnostic tools that they have. They got back to me and said, we're trying to figure that out and we'll see in a future video. So make sure you're subscribed to check that. Also, I have a Model 3 long range on the channel now. We're doing suspension, wheels, wrap, body kit, all kinds of stuff. So subscribe so you don't miss that build as well. But let's get the Model Y. Also another, oh my God, oh my God.
<laughs> I vomited. Ew. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Andrew put this on here. It actually looks really nice. A black logo. Is that an Amazon product? It is an Amazon product. All right. We'll have it linked in the description for everyone because it actually looks really good. It came in, a, what was it, a kit? Exterior and... Yeah, so this came in three parts. Front badge, rear badge, steering wheel. I was planning to never use this, just use the front and back, but turns out I'm only using this one because the front and back, you need your original logo, which I didn't have. Yeah. So it's, it's a cover, it just goes on. So my Model Y, it's a 2020, I got it in July of 2020, and it has 43,400 miles on it. So the battery health currently is at 86.2%, degradation of 13.8%. Battery health of this little monitor that, that they have is still in the green range. Now it looks like the original capacity of the battery is 77.3 kilowatt hours. So now the usable capacity is 66.7 kilowatt hours. And it's below average for a, a fleet average of what they're getting reported into the Tessie app. 13% degradation, and again, it's just gonna be leveling. Most of my charging is done at home. I just, I, you know, around town, I'm never charging at superchargers. The only time I'm at superchargers is when I'm going on road trips. I've gone across the country a few times, and that's been excellent. So, I don't know, uh, kind, not really concerning there. And also, as far as trips go, a lot of the range of your car depends on how fast you're driving. So if I was ever in a situation where it's like, you're not gonna make it to the next charger, I could just drive slower. And it's the same for a gas car. I could cut off air conditioning. There's all kinds of things you can do to make sure you're running efficiently. Also, something we just added here was this carbon fiber dashboard from Fusion Motorsports. I'll have that linked in the description along with the video of me installing it. The matte carbon fiber looks awesome. My coupon code Jeeb saves you $50 on their website for that. So that's really cool. But yeah, so that's the degradation after 43,000 miles, 13.8%, I think is what I said. So 86.2% of the original battery capacity still in the car. So that's it. And that's like, again, that's as accurate as I can be. Again, that's also, I feel like that's a lot more miles than the average person is gonna be putting on their car in two years, 20,000 miles a year is a lot. So I hope that is helpful to you. And then this also varies like if you never supercharge. If you're uh, just filling your car with electrons at absurd speeds, then yeah, it's good that your car is going to wear or degrade quicker. If you're always charging at home on a home charger, it's gonna be better. I always set my battery to 90% charge rates, or actually right now I'm setting it to 85%. Sometimes I would set 90. I guess 95 is even okay, but just if you don't have an LFP battery, you shouldn't be keeping it at like 95 to 80% its total capacity, charging it every night. The only time I would charge it to 100 is when I'm going on a road trip and I'm gonna be leaving right as it hits 100%. So that's my recommendation to you guys. I hope this video was helpful. Also, 